Okay, morning everyone. My name's Steve Coombs, and I'm a local from Nottingham, one of the applied mathematicians here. Can you all hear me? Yes. yes, good, good, good. So I'm going to talk to you about the geometry and pigmentation of seashells. Now this is not what I do on a, on a daily basis, so I just thought I'd mention uh, my own research interests. So I'm an applied mathematician that's interested in understanding the dynamics of the brain. Okay, so here's a little cartoon of the brain here, and you can see some fibre tracks I've coloured in red, blue, and green. And on a daily basis, myself and, and the colleagues that I work with are interested in building sort of little circuit diagrams of the brain, wiring up neurons in a mathematical sense, and imposing some dynamics on this network, and trying to understand the sort of the emergent phenomena that gives rise to cognition. Okay? So here's a little simulation of a mathematical model of a brain, and the little red dots are supposed to represent the spiking activity of excitatory neurons, and the little black dots are a corresponding set of activity for so-called inhibitory neurons. Okay? So that's what I'm really interested in. So how does this link to seashells? Well, seashells are the houses for living organisms that also have a central nervous system. So today I'll talk a little bit about geometry, but if there's time at the end, I'll come back and talk to you about the neural activity of the organism that lives inside a seashell. Okay? In terms of application areas, Having a good understanding of the dynamics of the brain can be applied to all sorts of clinical phenomena. Understanding epilepsy, designing treatments for Parkinsonian tremor, understanding things like migraine aura. And we recently had a meeting in Nottingham on just this system. Before I get on to seashells, I want you to just you know, have a look at your bags. You'll see this nice black and white pattern. Okay? It's just a fun, fun bit of uh, eye candy, if you like. Where does it come from? Well, it's, it's now been adopted as the BAMC logo, but it is, in fact, uh, some activity pattern of a mathematical model of cortical tissue, the bit of tissue that lives on the outside of your brain. And you see here, this is a static image of some mathematical model of spreading activity that spreads across the cortex. So the idea of this mathematical model is where you see a red blob, the neurons in that bit of the cortex are firing a lot, and that activity spreads in some sort of wave. And these sorts of waves are seen in phenomena like epileptic seizures. Okay? So that's where the logo comes from. It's something to do with neuroscience. But, you know, I'm not supposed to talk about neuroscience. I'm supposed to talk about seashells. So Sarah uh, found this lovely sandy image of seashells that's now found its way into your booklet. And it's these shapes that you see here that I'm going to talk about. So you see there's lots of star shapes and conical shapes. Many, many, many shapes, okay? So my wife was kind enough to buy me a new camera for Christmas, so playing around with it then, I took my own picture of these, cell sh uh, these uh, shell shapes that I happen to have, and you see they've all got something in common. They're all a little bit twisty in some sense, and they've all got an opening. Well, there's many, many different shapes you can get out, and this one here is called the soldier, this one's called the pelican's foot, this is a whelk, and so forth, okay? So what I'd like to do today is just to talk about these shapes. How do we describe these shapes? And hopefully, I'm just going to use some tools, some elementary geometry that you've met already, and just sort of stretch them out a bit so we can tackle more interesting surfaces than ones you probably met at school, like spheres and tubes and so forth. Why are mathematicians interested in shells or sea shapes? Well, why not? They look pretty pretty, OK? Um, and to illustrate this, I've just grabbed um, the cover of a very, very recent book written by Tim Gowers, who's a Fields medalist from Cambridge. And he's written something called The, uh, the Princeton Companion to Mathematics. And it's a thousand page tome all about different branches of modern applied maths. But of all the images he could choose to put on his front cover, he chose a seashell. OK? Because on some subconscious level, mathematicians like these nice regular shapes. I don't know why, OK? But I've, I've chosen to talk about them here today. OK, so I need to build uh, some ideas to, uh, to help us create these shapes. And, and I'm going to rely on geometric notions to start with. Okay? So this, the shapes you've seen, as I've emphasized, they've got some sort of twisty aspect to them. And they've got a, an opening, which, decide, which is where it's a bit, it's the bit, if you're going to see the animal in a shell, you know, you'll look into the opening and see, see the soft tissue there. So a natural description of seashell shapes may be given in terms of a generating spiral. This is this twisty thing I mentioned earlier. Together with the shape of the opening. And I'm going to call this opening 
a generating curve. So to give you the idea, let's imagine that we want to make a torus. So here's a torus. How could I do that? Well, I could take a, a circle and just rotate it around this z-axis here. Okay? And if I go all, way, all the way around, you know, a whole 2 pi radians, 360 degrees, I'll get a closed tube, which is a torus. Okay? That's not a great model of a seashell, is it? You can't see the animal. There's no, <laughs> there's no opening to see the soft tissue. Okay? So if we want to use these ideas seriously to make seashell shapes, we have to do a little bit more. Okay? I've, got, I've got to start moving these shapes in this z direction here. So let's play this game again. Take your circle, you're going to rotate it around the z-axis, but now we're going to translate it up. Okay? So I'm going to have some z-axis here. This tube is now getting twisty, it's going up. It's looking more like you know, half of a DNA spiral, but it's getting more seashell shape in some sense. Now let's play another game now. Let's pick a different generating curve that's not circular. Let's start with a semicircle. I'm going to imagine starting a semicircle somewhere down here. And I'm going to ask you in your heads to imagine translating that up the z-axis, but at the same time, rotate it around the axis and let the circle, the semicircle, grow. And that's going to model real growth. And in which case, you'd expect to generate a, a little shape like this. Okay? And this looks much more like a whelk. So this is the basic idea we need to generate seashell shapes. It's the notion of a helical spiral, something to move around, and we need to specify some opening, some generating curve here. So you can imagine we could play this game. With all, instead of starting with a semicircle, I could start with a more irregular shape. I don't have to go around in a nice regular direction. I can make, I can make choices in all sorts of other twisty curves. So other, math, other mathematical shell surfaces can be generated by rotating more realistic shell openings around so-called helical spirals. And I've plotted some of them here for you. So these are mathematical objects that are you know, generated by mathematicians to describe shell shapes, but they have a direct correspondence with, with shells in the real world. And these shells have been given nice names like Planorbis, Epitonium, Turitella, Lyria, Conus, and so forth. So they're very nice names. But if we want to generate these shapes for ourselves, we need to take a little step back and remind ourselves about the mathematical forms for circles, spirals, and surfaces. And I'm going to focus on so-called parametric descriptions of these geometrical objects. OK, but we need to start simple. OK, so we're going to start with a little reminder about uh, Cartesian geometry. So if I give you a plane and ask you to tell me where I am in the plane, you can do that with two numbers, so-called x and y coordinates from Cartesian geometry. 